Brian Sean here from Revival Brothers, here to show you how to take a project from start to finish, from opening it up to actually analyzing the project. So we're going to take one of our Revival Brother projects that we've uh, already purchased and, and taken down just to kind of illustrate how we move through these, these projects using IPA. So I'm going to go ahead and open up IPA. So what we've done is we've created a, a, a file already with the name or address of the project. And we're gonna go ahead and open that. So once this is open, we're in our landing page. We're gonna go ahead and click on start here, which will take us to the input sheet. Sean, can you give me the address? Yeah, it's 834 Tuttle Road, T-U-T-T-L-E Road, T-U. Okay. City's uh, Mason, Michigan. Zip code is 48854. It's a note, occupied, and unpaid principal balance is $32,714.96. Mortgage payment is $297.06. And 10% interest rate. Okay. And 360 term. The original loan balance was $33,850. The loan origination date is 2-15-2012. The first pay date is the same. And next due date is 12 15 2017. Okay, so once you have all your information related to your note input in the input sheet, uh, we'll go ahead and click on uh, analyze. So now we're on the analyzer sheet and on the analyzer sheet, we have another video that explains exactly how it's all broken down, how all the buttons work. So I encourage you to watch that. But real quick, we have this broken down into investments, due diligence, exit strategies and analytics. The investments is all of your costs associated with the, the project, all your capital out. Your due diligence is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, and your exit strategies is basically your returns and looking at it in different ways from, um, you know, selling the note to fix and flipping. And then we have graphs over here that are kind of show you where you stand against time. So it's profit against time, return on investment against time and capital out of it against time. Now, once we have the address in, you can see it here in this cell. So if you see something that's off, make sure that you correct yourself on the input sheet. And you can go ahead and change this and then click analyze again and it'll go ahead and update everything here. So make sure that you have it correct. Otherwise uh, you'll get in, uh, not available in some of these cells. Now that we have the address in, uh, we're going to go ahead and hit, click this button, Fetch All. Now this button only exists on the automation version. It uh, does not exist on analytics or production. So what it's doing now is it's going out to the internet. It's uh, pulling in information related to this address. So you can see it's pulled in the parcel number, the county, the bed bath count, square footage, lot size, even market rents. And then it also brings in a, a picture or an image related to the project if it exists out there. If it doesn't, it'll tell you. And if you have a picture that you want to put in here yourself, all you have to do is right click on that copy and then come over here and click this button, paste image, and it'll paste it into this window. So right now it's, it's gathering all of the e-values from most of the sites out there like Zillow, iComps, HomeSnap, eAppraisal. It's taking an average of all of these and then it's going to go into the demographics and it's going to look up crime, income, schools, population, unemployment, market temp, and give us an idea of, you know, the status of, of this uh, property related to its location. And then it's going to go and look at uh, comps around this property. We developed an algorithm that kind of looks at the closest properties that have been sold in the last six months or or 12 months, depending on 
on how rural the property is. And then uh, it'll also look at bed, bath, count, and square footage. Once it has that information, it creates a price per square foot. And then it takes an average of this price per square foot with the E values and comes up with an ARV. Now that we have an ARV, we have some automation that also brought in some numbers or calculated some numbers related to this due diligence, one of which was the ARV and then the as-is value. Now this as-is value is very loose. I don't recommend you go off of this. I recommend you call a realtor and find out what the exact as-is value or, or a general as-is value uh, would be for it and then input it in. Sean, do you remember what the as-is value is for this? Yeah, for this one, the realtor says around 60,000. Okay, so we'll put in 60,000. And as I manipulate these numbers, you'll see everything change. So everything in this, this system is dynamic. Now we have a, a UPB and I paid principal balance of 32,000. This was input by us in the input sheet. You can see here, the unpaid principal balance. What, what we've uh, set the system to do is tell us if we have an unpaid principal balance of 32,715 and we want an offer price of at 55% of that number, what would the offer price be? So our offer price at 55% of UPP is 17,993. Do you remember what we paid for this, Sean? 17,5. So 17,5 is what we paid. And at 17.5, we paid 53% of UPB. So you can see how you can start to manipulate these numbers. And as, as you move through the project, as you pay for things, as, as um, you know, you're getting towards the, the, the end of it, or even knowing what construction budgets are, you can change these numbers and constantly look at what your bottom line is. Uh, so moving down the cost column, if you want to call it that, we, uh, we're looking at property taxes now. In this case, the property taxes didn't come in because it didn't exist online. So Sean, do you remember what those property taxes were? 1600. 1600, we'll just simply enter it here. Uh, in some cases, you can click this estimated tax button. It'll go out and it'll search. If it doesn't find it, it won't report it back in. You can always go and, and click on the county button down here and it'll bring up the county with the address and you can look it up as well. We also have purchasing costs. Um, broker fees, if you have one, would go in here. The acquisition is carried from the offer price up here. Any kind of appraisal fees, back taxes, escrows, liens would all go in here if you had them. We can, moving down into the direct costs, we, we can see we don't have anything in here for renovation. So we probably want to add that. If we know off the bat what we want to add, maybe 20,000, 30,000, 15, 10, we can do that now. Or we can come down to our assumptions and we can set it to a low, medium, or high reno renovation, depending on the quality of, of the asset. So I'm going to set it to high because we know this one's going to need quite a bit of renovation. And I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to click on Calc Reno and it'll go ahead and calc that reno based on $36 a square foot, which is one of our higher numbers for renovation. What it does is it takes that number and multiplies it by the square footage of the property to give us an estimate of, of what we might spend on, on this. I'm going to go ahead and round that up to 60. So we have a, a renovation cost of 60,000 now. And as I enter that in there, you can see all these numbers changing. So moving down, we also see other co direct costs related to the, to the property like winterization. And winterization, obviously you don't need it for every property because you know, in Florida, it's not, it's not, it's not gonna freeze over. So you can simply uncheck this and it will update everything accordingly. Uh, same thing for any of these other costs. So if, if, for instance, it was a vacant property and you didn't need to evict or, or get rid of a tenant, you can uncheck that as well. And again, it affects everything else. In our case, we're gonna go ahead and leave these on. And then moving down to the holding costs, we got loan servicing, we've got total project taxes, insurance, and everything's being carried down from, from above to give us a, a total number. Now our, our total projected uh, costs are at 89.2 uh, based on, on this reno and our offer price and, and everything else associated with it. So 
from that, we can come down here and we can look at our project cost breakdown. And right now it's at 22,576. The reason why it's at 22,576 is because we're looking at reperforming that note right now. We have the reperforming uh, exit strategy checked right now. If we were to change that to fix and flip, for example, uh, that number is going to change. So you can see now it's at 89,000. The reason is because we have added uh, a renovation into that. When we're looking at reperforming it, we're not doing a renovation, so that cost wouldn't be associated with it at all. So it's smart that way and it's pretty dynamic. Now, there's, there's one other aspect when we're building a budget and that's understanding time and time frames. What we can do is we can come down to the assumptions and we can look at the time periods. To collect those collateral files usually it takes about eight weeks. Uh, depending on the seller, this may be plus or minus that. You can um, input that directly here. Foreclosure period, usually it changes from state to state, but uh, in our case for this project, it's around four months. And uh, evictions usually uh, around eight weeks. The full renovation, now that we have a full renovation of 60,000, I'm gonna go ahead and put this at eight weeks to be conservative. And um, we also have things like days on market. How long is this thing gonna take to sell? Well, what, one thing that we have in our due diligence is an area where it looks for the days on market or the average days on market based on the zip code and reports it back in. It takes those days on market and, and puts it down into the fix and flip area because this is basically days on market based on a fully renovated asset. We also have, uh, if it was, if we were to wholesale it, how long would it take to sell? So we're gonna anticipate a little bit more than what it would take if it was fully renovated. If for some reason you wanted to try out both, you can click this button here and it would add both in. And um, you can try to wholesale it. If it didn't wholesale, you can move to a fix and flip. And that would also change your overall time frame and your your returns based on time. We're gonna we're gonna keep that off though. And then and then down here you can see uh, our estimated completion dates for each of the fix and flips, which is self-explanatory. All of these uh, numbers in terms of time frames are also found up here in our our graph. So you can see fix and flip, wholesale, rental, foreclosure, reperform, and flipping note. You can see the percentage of, of or return on investment across the board, and you can see the time associated with with each one. The orange is is the return, and the the graph or the yellow is the time associated with it. So we can see. If we were to fix and flip it or wholesale it, we're not looking at a drastic difference in, in time. We're looking at uh, a pretty big difference in return on investment. But at the same time, if we come down to profit and we look at the, the profit margins, we're looking at a $53,000 profit versus a 26. If we come down even further and look at our capital invested, we're looking at a $90,000 investment versus a $29,000 investment. So that could be a, a factor for somebody uh, who may not have the capital to move forward with a fix and flip, and that could be a reason not to not to to do it. So, <clears throat> so far we've we've um, ran the due diligence, we've checked our numbers, and uh, and we've and now we're going to play with our our exit strategy. So right now we have it selected on reperforming the note. If we were to reperform this note, what would it look like? and how long would it take? Right now we have the note set at 12 months. And again, all this stuff can be changed in the, in, in the default assumptions, which we have another video for that shows you how it all works in detail. But that number can be changed to whatever you want. Um, right now it's set to a 12 month period. And what it's saying is that how, if we reperform this note and hold it for 12 months, what kind of return are we looking at? Well, we're looking at a 26% return for holding it for 12 months it's going to be a little bit more than 12 months because we have we have to get we have to prepare it we have to uh, get the collateral files there's other there's other time involved other than holding it for 12 months after we've reperformed it so obviously that the time frame is a little longer but what it's telling us is that um, 
uh, we'll, we'll make a, a return on investment of 30%. Our annual ROI is 26% and our net profit is uh, 67.81. If we move up to the foreclosure sale, in this case, the foreclosure sale doesn't apply to us because this is a forfeiture project. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and skip that. But if it was going to foreclosure auction, this would tell us our minimum and maximum bid we wanna set that auction at. And uh, you can set all of this manually right now. Um, it's set to, uh, I'll just show you real quick. Uh, if we go down to. Let's set the 15% right now. Yeah, so, right here. Yeah. Foreclosure sell, minimum required return on investment is 15%. So if, if, if I don't want to accept anything less than 15%, I'll set that at 15%. And at 15%, um, we know that our minimum bid is going to be 28.5. Just real quick, the reason why it's a forfeiture, uh, because the borrower didn't want to reperform. And two, this particular note uh, was not a mortgage. It was a contract for deed or land contract. So, If we wanted to rent it, we can click on the rental. And in the rental area, it'll tell us things like what our cap rate is, what our total recoup period is, our cash on cash. And then it'll also give us our return on investment and our annual returns. It'll tell us our overall profit and time associated with it. So right now we have it set to um, 23, 23 months. I think the... It's set for 12 month uh, rental period. So the total time frame for the rental is 23 months. So, um, but you can change the rental period from 12 months to 24 months and you'll see everything change accordingly. Right. So all that can be changed down here in the in, in the, the rental section right there. Default assumptions in the rental section. Yep. So, um, and then the other thing too is if you had a refat rehab for the rental, you would change it here, which would be separate from the wholesale or the uh, fix and flip. But again, we get in more detail on this in another video. So in our case, we're not interested in, in renting this. We're interested in, in wholesaling or fix and flipping because if we look at the wholesale number, we're at 89%. If we're, if we're gonna fix and flip it, we're at 59% with a $60,000 reno. So uh, if we also look at the time frames, we're at 9.7 months on the wholesale at 89%. And on a fix and flip, we're at 59% at 11.3, so just under a year. But at this point, we have to decide what are we going to do? Are we going to try to wholesale this deal or are we going to try to go all the way and fix and flip it? So this is kind of how you move through these projects and analyze them and look at them. And then as the project uh, progresses, if the market goes down, if the market goes up, you can change the CRV accordingly. In fact, if you get six months into the project or eight months into the project, you can recalculate all this stuff just by coming up here and saying get E values, which would recalculate this. Or um, if you wanted to get the comps, you would just uh, click on the get comps up here and it would recalculate the comps as well. So that would update you current to where the market value is at that time. So with that, hopefully this was helpful. Sean, did you want to add anything? Well, uh, maybe you can uh, show them the tool tips. Yes. So. We also have embedded some tool tips in each of each of these exit strategies. So if you hover over these red markers, it'll explain a little bit about each of these exit strategies and what's going on. Also, we have things like property taxes. It'll tell you where the property taxes, what, what they are and what the calculation is. Um, as we, if you see, wherever you see that, that red marker, we have a note. So if you come down here to our assumptions, there's, there's one on each one that explains some of the, the calculations. If, if you guys have any other questions related to how you move through this, feel free to drop us an email. Uh, Sean, you want to give, a, give them the address? Yeah. So yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to give us an email at support at revivalbrothers.com and, uh, We'll get back to you within a 24 hour period. Um, so we're here to support you. And I, I think that's pretty much it. You covered everything. I hope it was helpful.